Shuffle of Trees. It's a joint work with Ike Murdoch. So the work has been going on for quite a few years, but now the preprint is on the archive. So if you want to check, feel free. What's the goal for today? We want, so first we will have to define this notion of Shuffle of Trees, but this Shuffle of Trees, they have some algebraic properties, they have some combinatorial properties, and that's our goal. We want to understand so algebraic and combinatorial properties. Of these shuffles. So but before understanding anything, we need to define something. So to define them, I will explain where they come from. Actually, they will come from motivating, uh, from a motivating category, the category of done all sets. But to explain a bit where done all sets come from, let's start slowly with simply shell sets, give some properties, some observations of the usual shuffles in simply solved sets and see how then they will be generalized. So let's start with this, okay. Uh, so simply solved sets, just pre shifts on delta, category delta was already recalled in a talk yesterday, if I remember right. <laughs> So it's a monoidal uh, category, there is a product, and this product is coming from shuffles, so that's at least one way to, to see it. Okay, so just to recall, when you have two representable uh, simply cell sets. The product can be seen as a union or whether it's a colimit because of the intersections of PQ uh, shuffles of delta P plus Q. So uh, I think everyone knows what a shuffle is, but let's see again the definition so that we can extend it uh, in a minute. So you have many ways to see shuffles. So what's a PQ shuffle? You can see it as a total order on the union of two already totally ordered sets and you want to preserve already the union of these P elements and the union of this Q element. Okay. Another way to say it is as a monotonous pass on some grid. So let's do an example in small dimension. So this would be, for instance, you have many ways to, to label it, but this is just one example of a way. A1, A2, A3, A4, A5. So it's a linear order, so when going to the right, we increase the order. Similarly, for this order here, when we go up, we increase the order. And now, monotonous pass. So you start here from the bottom, you go to bottom left, you go to the top right. Let's say we do something like this. So this would mean that the total order in this union on set would be A1 smaller than B1, smaller than A2, A3, B2, uh, A4, B3, A5, 
for instance. Okay? So, uh, we will try to generalize this uh, a bit later. And just remember one of the, let's say, geometric applications of these uh, shuffles. Let's say you consider delta 2 times delta 1 uh, geometrically. So this is uh, a prism. If you want to cut this prism into three tetrahedrons, you can, uh, oh, you want to cut it into tetrahedrons, you can know that there will be three tetrahedrons because there will be three shuffles of delta 2 times uh, delta 1, and these uh, uh, shuffles will tell you what kind of tetrahedron you need to take, and you can also define, if you want, we don't need it today, some, let's say, par partial shuffles. So, for instance, you go directly from here to here without taking uh, a path just horizontal and vertical, and this will give you intersection of shuffles. So, uh, shuffles and the geometry of uh, product of simply solved sets are very much linked. Okay. What kind of other applications are there from uh, shuffles and from simplicial sets, actually? So, uh, there is a well-known Quillen equivalence between simplicial, the category of simplicial sets and the category of topological spaces. So, in a way, you can see simplicial sets as a combinatorial model of topological spaces. Moreover, something which will be more interesting for us is that there is also a nice equivalence between simplicial sets and categories with the nerve functor. So we have talked about uh, this uh, yesterday already. So cut with the nerve functor, we go to a set. This has a left adjoint, toe. Name of toe is not. Uh, very common, okay, and with, <coughs> with this and this nest functor, uh, you can, so let's say, define, that's one way to define a notion of infinity categories, so with categories with, uh, <coughs> let's say, uh, compositions up to homotopy, and so this category of simplicial sets can be very useful to understand uh, infinity category. So now let's say instead of working with category, we want to work with upwards. So in this talk, when I say upwards, I mean symmetric colored upwards, something, let's say, set-based, so no linear structure or anything, or abelian groups like Frederick had uh, yesterday, so just category of set, and then symmetric colored upwards on set. You can also see this upwards, if you want, as multi-categories. So instead of categories where you have just one source, for morphism, you have one source and one output. Here you have many sources, as just, again, one output. It's an equivalent uh, way to, to, to see this. You want also, in this notion of upward, a notion of infinity upward. So compositions are up to homotopy, and you want to control this homotopy. So this will be one of the main motivations of dendroidal sets. So um, let's say we have a generalization introduced. So it was about 10 years ago by Itai Weiss, so uh, PhD students of Mordaic, okay, and this generalization to dendroidal set has been very much uh, been studied and used in some, also for with some people here for in the audience, Dimitri, for instance, okay, and you can see, as I said, dendroidal set has some combinatorial models, let's say, for uh, symmetric colored upward. So, so let's say model for symmetric colored 
upward, and what the ID? You just replace the category delta that we had here by another category, so a category of trees, so category called omega, <coughs> so this is category of trees. In a minute, I will define these trees. But just as we said before, for category, you have your morphism with just one source and one output. So when you compose morphisms in a row, you just have something which is linear. Okay? But now, when you have many, or the possibility to have many inputs and just one output, when you want to compose them, what appears are trees. So that's why trees appear in, in this context. So now let's define a bit more properly this category omega. So objects are trees. So let's, let me draw an example of kind of trees that I consider. Okay, so the way I see actually uh, trees, I see them as a finite poset with, so uh, you have to think of this poset as a poset of edges, and you specify, or you want, you don't have to, be, to specify it, but you want a minimal element, so this minimal element will be the root edge. Okay, and also you want to specify a subset of leaf, leaves. So for instance, this will be a leaf, this will be a leaf, this will be a leaf, this also. Here, because we have drawn a vertex, it means on the picture that it is not a leaf. And here we have, so, just uh, two internal edges, and here we have, so, this root edge. Okay? And also, maybe I didn't mention it, they are not planar. If you want, you can consider them planar, but then it's not exactly the same category. But as we, I will do everything on the board, it, it doesn't make much a difference. Okay, and then for morphisms, you have two ways to define morphism. So in a minute, I will have another way with some more vocabulary. But now, let's just say you can see them as generated by some class of morphisms, a bit like the morphisms you have in uh, delta. You can generate them with isomorphism. We also always need this. Degeneracies, degeneracies, and faces. So I don't want to get into details about what are degeneracies and faces. Uh, it's not useful today. Just imagine what you could generalize from delta, and probably you will get the right notions. If you don't like the definition, in a minute I can give you another one. Okay. Uh, okay, so this will be the category of trees that is needed for dendroidal sets. Just a very easy remark. You have an embedding of uh, delta into omega, so when we go to, to pre-shifts, you also get a map. Okay, so that's one important point. Another important point, already to make a connections between these trees, ah, okay, maybe I should uh, be a bit more specific. So when I say it's a poset of edges, I can, or I can, or I should, maybe, label these edges, okay? So, I can write name. So R is a root edge, uh, uh, A and C are my inner edges, B, D, E, F are the leaves. Okay, so we have letters on these edges. And now, so the link between upwards and tree, let's say we take a tree, we can very easily define an upward. So we consider 
what we call omega of t, the free upward on t. And let's go back to these examples. So we want something which is a colored upward. So we need to define colors. We need to define operations and compositions. What are the colors of the upward? It's just the uh, edges. OK. And the operations, so they will need some edges and as input, some, uh, some other edge as output. So you just, for instance, look at this part. For instance, this vertex actually would give you uh, an operation. But you can take, actually, if you want any connected subtrees. So let's just say these are subtrees. OK, and you can compose them exactly following the picture. So this gives you uh, an upward. OK, uh, let's continue a bit with uh, definition. Now we can define dendroidal sets. So you just replace delta by omega, so poor shift, so functor. Uh, Delta up to set. And uh, let's also give a notation. So be careful, this is with parentheses, this is with brackets. So now we just take uh, the morphisms in uh, omega from something to t, so the representable. <laughs> Uh, we will need it in some further definitions. OK? So this is our dendroidal set. So they said introduced by Itai Weiss. So now here we have D sets. And we want something from uh, upwards to dendroidal sets. So some, let's say, generalization of the nerve. So there is one. It's called the dendroidal uh, nerve. <laughs> So to define the dendroidal nerve, so it will be the dendroidal nerve of an upward, so of some p, so this is an upward. And as it's a dendroidal set, we need to know what it is on a tree t. So this is a tree. And this will just be homomorphisms of upward between uh, let me check. Yeah, it's from omega t to p. So we had our free upward omega t, and now you look at the morphism between omega t and p. This gives you the dendroidal nerve. So it looks very much like the definition of the of the nerves for uh, simply short sets. It's easiest generalization you can think of, and. Uh, Maybe let me go back to what I said about morphisms before. If you want another notion of morphisms between, let's say, T and S, actually it would be a morphism of off poad between omega T and omega S. This gives you another definition of the morphisms in omega. OK? Uh, let's summarize a bit. So as I said, we had, uh, we had cat with our nerves. We had uh, S set. Here we have dendroidal sets. So we have each week. So when you consider this I here, you, you get some induced I shriek from simply short sets to dendroidal sets. Here you also have a map from categories to upwards, so symmetric colored upwards. And here you have your dendroidal nerve. Here you had an adjoint. Here, similarly, you can have an adjoint. OK. Uh, you can have model structures everywhere. And as I said, here you can define a notion of, uh, or many notions of uh, infinity categories. One of them given in simplicial sets by some, let's say, weak condition. Here you have something 
similar, you can define the notion of infinity upward, purely, let's say, combinatorially. And it has been proven now that this notion of infinity upward here is the same notion as infinity upward of Lurie. OK? So that's a uh, crash course and motivation on Don Riddle sets. Now, what kind of product do we have here? And how is it linked with some notion of shuffles of trees? So, it's, we begin with defining a product between two representables, and when we define uh, the product between two representables, then it can be extended with a can extension. But first, we need to define some omega s tensor omega t. It's defined as some dendroidal nerve of, so here we need upward, so we will use the upward defined free upward associated to s and t. And what is tricky is this tensor product of upward. So there are many notions of tensor product of upward. And here we want the bormann vogt tensor product. I will recall briefly what it is. We need to, to know a bit about it to understand. One product of upward. OK, definition is not too complicated. Let's say we start with P an upward with colors C, Q an upward uh, with colors D, and we define this P tensor Q. So first, we need to define the colors. The colors will be the product of the colors. And for the operations, we have two kinds of, uh, let's say, generating operations. You can either take the, let's say, unit of some color C and tensor it with an operation in Q, or similarly, an operation in Q, and oh, sorry, in P, and we tensor it with the identity of some color in D. So this will give you generating operations. And you have some relations. So this is generating operations. And now you have some relations. And this relation is some kind of interchange law. The idea is when you have, let's say, some operation in P, so something like this, with three times the same operation in Q. So let's say this operation is uh, ternary, uh, this operation in Q, so it's the same one three times is binary. So this one has to be the same as now the operation in Q below and the operation in P above. Okay, so you can notice it's the same number of, uh, of leaves for, this, uh, for these guys, but the leaves will not be in the same order. Actually, it will be a shuffle. Yeah. And uh, so this is just a generating relation. So every time in a tree that you see something like this, you can have some equivalence. OK. And so this defines this uh, product here. And now, question, do we have some similar relations? Uh, do we have some similar relation when you do the product with some notion, some co-limit, or some union of shuffles? Answer will be yes. And so this will allow us now to introduce these shuffles. Uh, to be up a bit. OK. So 
So exactly as the part I am erasing here, we have a first proposition, so everything is still well known in the literature for past 10 years, about, like this. And proposition, you can more or less still read it if you take, so now, representable, tensor, another representable, it will be co-limit of some uh, shuffles. I have to define this notion of shuffles uh, in a minute, but this is to motivate you of some other representable. It's not directly one representable, it's a co-limit of representable. Okay. So now let's give some definition. So we'll give many equivalent definition of shuffles and already a few first properties. <coughs> Just a remark before I forget, when you consider trees, so uh, if, you, if you want, you can think, instead of thinking of edges, you can think of vertices. And so these, these vertices have different kinds of RIT. So I have one in my example of IT0, IT2, IT4. We can consider the subcategory with nothing of IT0. These are called usually open trees. And in the rest of the talk, I continue with open trees. But everything we have in the paper can be done with any kind of trees, not just open trees. There are some particular cases to, to deal with sometimes. OK, so let's start with an example to see what this shuffle can look like. So I start with a very small example. So I have A, B, C, D, E. So that's my tree S, my tree T. I consider uh, one, two, three, four. And in these cases, I will have three shuffles. OK, so what are my shuffles in these cases? Think a bit like in delta, when you have p and q, you can have the elements of q, uh, or let's say the q elements after the p elements of, um, of p, or in the other way around, and you can have then some uh, intermediate mix. It will be more or less the same here. So this is, so let's say, full vertices and empty vertices. So you can have the full vertices below. And now above this guy, we have two and even, sorry, three leaves. So on each of the leaves, we plug this one. And for the edges, we can actually label these edges with product of the edges. So we not label them every time, but just to show you, this would be A1, this would be uh, B1, C1, because in a way, this part is the hoof, the wood here times this guy. So this would be again D1, uh, E1. And here you would add something like uh, D2, D3, D4, uh, E2, E3, E4, and here, uh, let's say, uh, C2, C4. I'm not labeling everything, OK? And you can notice, actually, that the leaves will be product of the leaves here. So here we had 9 times, times 3 times 3. Here, again, we have 9 leaves. We have another one which is a bit uh, intermediate. So we start with this wood here, but now we have on the left, we continue. So this part here on the right, we don't change it. We will uh, see that we have actually no way to, to change it. But now here I can, instead of having first, the, let's say the black and then the white, we can switch them. So we already see that there is a close connection exactly because of 
So the definition here with the Borman voc product, this part here with the Borman voc uh, relation rule, you switch this to this part. Here, if you want some labeling, this would be again A1, B1, C1. This part here would be uh, B2, B3, B4. You can notice if you have completed the labeling that B2, B3, B4 actually do not appear in this shuffle as edges. So the uh, edges which appear are not uh, the same. Also, the number of vertices which appear are not uh, the same. For instance, here we have five vertices, here we have six. And there is just another one which can happen. So it would be uh, this one, this one, uh, this one. Yes, so when we start with the white one here. And actually, here we will have copies of S. As many copies of S as there are elements here in uh, leaves of T. Okay, and again, between this shuffle and this shuffle, you actually apply some borman vogt relation to go from this part to this part. Okay, so this is just an example. Let's now see a precise definition. So a shuffle of S and T, so two trees, open trees in the case of this talk. So again, it has to be a tree such that so colors or edges, let's say edges of A are a subset of uh, the product of the edges. So for the edges, I use letter E. Okay, that's the first condition. We have another condition we have already mentioned the leaves of A are now in bijection, so exactly the same with the leaves of S times the leaves of T. Okay. The root we have seen in each case is and it's something general that the root of A is just root of S root of T. Okay, but now what is a bit more uh, subtle is that we need in a way some compati compatibility uh, condition to say that we are not uh, allowing some weird uh, stuff and we can actually, if you want to think like this, thinking of vertices, we want to really say that, for instance, the root is either in S or in T. Okay, so uh, we want, and we can see it here, so if this is, let's say, this is A1, this would be A2, A3, A4. So above some edge, so for instance here A1, in these different cases, you have either to completely go in the direction of S for all the uh, uh, successors of these edges are completely in the direction of T. So these two, they go in the direction of S, or in this case, you go in the direction of T. But you can't mix, let's say, some B1 and some A4. This is forbidden. If you want to draw vertices, that's a, an obvious condition. So let's say if you have ST, an edge of A, which is not a leaf, then you can speak of its successors, so the edges just above. And now for these successors, you have two possibilities. They are either of the form, let's say, S1, T, S2, T, that's where S, N, T for S1, ST, sorry, S1, S, N, successors of S. Okay, of S in the tree S. Or similarly, you will always go in the other direction. So S T1, S T L uh, for then T1, T2, 
TL, successors of T in T. Okay? If you want to draw vertices, you need these conditions. Okay, so this is one definition, which is quite uh, easy to work with. But there are plenty of other interesting equivalent uh, definitions that what I will uh, say now. So I have labeled my conditions so I can uh, say we can reply this condition by sorry, this condition by this one or this one and so on. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now let's go to some equivalent definitions. We can, for instance, replace condition four by something a bit uh, different, uh, or let's say condition four can be replaced by So condition four was something when you looked above some vertices, you can do something completely different. You can say, okay, I have a set of leaves. Now I look at the branch between each of the leaves to the wood. That is because it's a tree, one unique path. I want all these paths going to the wood to be some classical shuffles of the total order of the uh, branch of S and the branch of T associated to this product of leaves. Okay, so can be written like this. So the branch below any leaf, so a leaf is of the form LS, LT because of condition two uh, is let's say a shuffle, so it's a linear shuffle, a classical shuffle, a simply solo shuffle, call them as you want, is a shuffle uh, of the branches, so respectively below LS in S and uh, the one below LT in T. Okay, this also uh, tells you it will be a shuffle. One small remark, I will not write it. There is some kind of converse of this condition. This condition is not enough. Uh, you need to have some compatibility relations, more or less something like four. So you, you need to know how to glue your different shuffles together and not every uh, family of classical shuffles is allowed. So that's one point and another completely different things. If you now look at conditions three and four together, you can actually remove them. So condition four we have already seen. Condition three, it's something about the wood. But in a way, with condition two, when you say you have all the leaves, you, have to, you, you want in a way to say that if I have all the leaves, if I want now something which is maximal, I will need also to have the wood and also to have some compatibility like this. So condition three and four can be replaced, and I will not get into details, can be replaced by a maximality condition. So it would be something you take the maximal tree, uh, satisfying one and two and so on. Uh, but this works. Okay, so that's already two equivalent definitions to the, the first one. Now some, some other definition which is a bit more linked with uh, this one, or with the, let's say, the Born and Vogt product. So if you want to use this Born and Vogt product for definition, you can say that you start with some, let's say, extremal um, shuffle. So for instance, this was is an extremal shuffle. It would be copies of T's 
above s, okay? So it's not just one t above s, it has to be copies of t's above s, as many as leaves. But now if you apply repeatedly the uh, bornman vogt uh, relation, but now you have to order it. So for instance, here the, the orientation that I take in my example would be to use it like this. So this is the rewriting part of the uh, talk. So you take an orientation of your bound and locked relation, you start for this one, and you can actually generate all the shuffles li like this. So shuffles can be obtained, or all shuffles can be obtained, uh, let's say from, uh, I don't want to say maximal or minimum uh, from now on. Let's say an extremal shuffle uh, Let's say, uh, so I said before, t above s, something like this, t above s, and apply from, and applying a directed barman vogt relation. BV interchange relation. Okay, and now when you have this proposition, of course I don't give you the proof, but most of them are not too, too difficult to write, sometimes just a bit technical. But when you have these relations, you, you see the not shuffles, you will actually get a partial order. Because let's say, T above S would be the maximal, and every time you apply your directed relation, you go to something smaller. Yes? Uh, since delta injects into omega, what is it? What does this uh, sort of version give you for shuffles of sympathies? This one? Yeah. It's just you start, let's say, with uh, all the blacks above all the white, and you can, let's say, switch this one. So when you switch this one, you go to something like this, something like this, and now you can switch here, and you can switch here, and you can apply this rule many times. That's it. Okay? And, uh, yes? So here we see that now we have a partial order on the sets of all shuffles, and in remaining of the talk, we'll go a bit further into this. Just let's give first uh, another way to see shuffles, which is actually linked to this one. If you look at S as some root with some subtrees S1 until Sn above it, and T, you look again at it as some root and some uh, subtrees T1, TL above it, you can say that the set of shuffles on S and T, so that's my notation, is actually just a product of S, say SI cross T, uh, some disjoint sum with a product of shuffles of S with Tj, so J would go from 1 to L, here I would go from 1 to N. The idea is that when you to take two shuffles of, of S and T, you want to know if the root will come from S or will come from T. When the root comes from S, what you will have above, above the root of S will be different subtrees, which will be shuffles of the subtrees above the root of S and the tree T. Similarly, if you take the root of T as the uh, root of your shuffles, you will have shuffles of S and the subtrees of T. And also, this can give you a partial order as uh, exactly as this one. Okay, one more small uh, remark. Here you can see we have trees with many leaves, and actually there are a bit too many leaves. Why do I mean by this? For instance, on the tree S, just keep the leaf D and look at, the, at what you would get. When you look at D and E, actually above E, so for instance here E1, and here I have not labels exactly the stuff, but above E, you have exactly the same thing as above D. So you have no choice 
uh, of, uh, let's say, what you put above E compared to what you put above D. So on the pictures, you can actually remove this leaf E. It will not change the kind of shuffles you get. Similarly, for T, you can remove uh, the leaf 3 and the leaf 4. And just with the leaf 2, you keep all the information. And also, a bit more harder to see, but it's still possible, with the leaf C, which I would call some kind of inner leaf, because it's a leaf coming from an inner vector, vertex, you can also remove it. It carries actually no information. Because above a leaf, the only stuff that you can put in your shuffle is the west of T. So you, you, you can't remove this information. So the remark is that you can actually reduce tree. So we can reduce trees. And you get S red, which would just be actually uh, this guy. Sorry. It's full. And T red, which would just be uh, this one. So my example actually was an example exactly from uh, the case of simply shawl sets and not really uh, don't do it all uh, sets. Okay, so now let's go to the properties. It's not uh, too long. So as I said, we had a poset structure on the shuffles of S and T. So let's see a bit how we can describe these uh, shuffles. And because the way here they are defined, it's a bit inductively. So we want one definition, let's say, in one step. So let's see first how it works on the simplicial case. So let's say we want to start with, uh, let's say, delta 2 cross delta 2. We know the shuffles, we can draw them as paths. So, uh, we have six paths, and I draw them like this, because this will be uh, how we see the paths and the partial order. So we have one path completely, let's say, below, and then this one. Then you have one which is a bit above. So that's how you define your order relation. One path uh, or one shuffle is smaller than this one is it in it, if its path is below the other path. So now you can either go like this or go like this. And you can see easily that these two are not comparable. Okay. And they will be actually compared by some other path. Here and here, similarly, you have this one. Okay. So how, from this example, can you see and describe the, 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 this partial order? It's actually quite easy. So you look at the squares, and I will number them in a, a meaningful way. So this is one. This one, I call this two and two primes, because we will not be able to compare them. And this one is three. OK. And now, what is this poset? So we look at the squares which are below the path. So here we have the empty set, here we have one, here we have one, two, here we have one, two prime, here we have one, two, two prime, and here we have everything, one, two, two prime, three. And this is just the inclusion relation, okay? And why did I label them like this? It's because, well, it's, what we need to do. But the way to see it is that on, let's say, the vertical part, you keep the order. But here, instead of considering this order, you look in the opposite direction. And now you take the partial order of these two orders. Okay? This gives you the ordering of the squares. And then from the squares, you look at the inclusions of not directly all the subsets, but subsets with uh, properties. So, OK, I, have, uh, I will change uh, orientation a bit later. But if you want to say that, uh, OK, uh, we don't want to allow some uh, 
let's say the subset one three, one to say that these two have to be in it, we need some notion of ideal of uh, a partial order, so we need some stability uh, conditions for the set. So I will give the definition right now, so I have 10 minutes left, something like this. Okay, but if you understand this picture and this ID, you can already almost guess my first theorem of this talk. So let's just give a definition. So let's call this an open set in an ideal, or an ideal, or a upper set, so an open set of a poset, of a poset uh, is I in P, such that if you have already some X in I, and you take now some I, uh, no, some, yeah, some I larger than Y, this implies that I also is in I. So sometimes it's called upper, up, upper set, uh, so it's some notion of stability. Uh, one important remark is we call this open set because actually co it corresponds to the Alexandrov topology of a poset. Okay, so we can use later topology for some uh, observations, some proofs. And now with uh, this notion, we have the theorem. So this poset of shuffles of S and T, it's isomorphic to the open sets of some posets. And what have we seen? We need to take, okay, so here I will switch now to vertices. It's a bit easier to work with vertices. And we actually exchange the order so that this up, we change the order of one of the two uh, partial uh, orders of S and T. Okay, great. Now look at examples. So it's a bit long to do. I know I would be late, so I did some kind of slide. With colors and everything. Okay. So we consider these two trees S and T, so blue and uh, red. What is this ST cross VT up? So you keep S3 in the same order. You change the order of T. You don't really see it on the picture because uh, something vertical stays vertical. But if you want to look at the root, or the couple root root, is somewhere in the middle. So here by root, I mean root vertex and not root edge because I, I'm thinking of vertices. So I get something like this. And now I want to say that my poset corresponds to some, let's say, upper sets or open sets. So uh, I start with T above S, and when I have T above S, I have actually uh, done no uh, permutation with the BV relation. If I do just this permutation with the BV relation, my corresponding open set would just be taking this uh, element as the open set. And now you can see I have actually, if I want to continue my, uh, my percolation and see all the other shuffles, I can either add this element or add this element or add many of them. And actually the elements, let's say, that I am allowed to add y by one correspond exactly to what I am allowed to do in the shuffle. So I could permute these two or I could permute these two correspond to these two elements, but I can do a bit more, permute this one, this one, and if I do these two ones, I'm allowed to do this one, and that I get this open set with these shuffles, and if I do everything, I get an open set which is uh, Vs cross Vt op, so the complete uh, set, and it corresponds to S above T. So this is a one-way description without any induction. Okay, what is the use, or one of the use of this uh, COM? Now, if you want to look at the automorphisms of this uh, poset, OK, 
Okay, so isomorphism preserving the, the order, you can see that it's nothing but just the products of the automorphisms of S and the automorphisms of T with uh, a small uh, hypothesis with S and T, or S or T actually, uh, uh, with at least two leaves. So we don't allow uh, S and T to be together linear trees. So this result would be something completely different for simplicial sets. It's not difficult and not actually very interesting, but for simplicial sets it gives something else. Okay. I will not go into details into the proof, just let's say that seeing open sets as open, so open for some topology, it helps to actually look at some fixed points for the automorphism, and when you look at fixed points for the automorphism, you can then see that actually this root root here would be a fixed point, and this helps you to decompose any automorphism of the shuffles to a pair of automorphism, because actually here there is some very natural map in this direction. Okay, so in the remaining three minutes, let's give some combinatorial properties. So, Actually, with Iker, we are a bit sad. We are, we are not completely satisfied with the results that we have. Maybe people in the audience can give us some hint to what more we, we can do. So one very easy property is that when you look at the cardinal of shuffles of S and T, you can quite easily bound them. So as we said, uh, it's still on the board here with condition four can be replaced by blah, blah, blah. There is some, as I said, some converse. So if you take a classical shuffle, you can always extend it as a shuffle of three. So you have more shuffles than the uh, number of shuffles between the eight of S plus eight of T, eight of uh, S. So this would just be the number of shuffles between uh, the longer, longest branch in, in S and the longest branch in T, H for so the length of a branch. And similarly here, because also of this condition, if you forget about the kind of compatibility that you need, so you can have a product for all alpha uh, beta, so alpha branches of S and beta branches of T, you also have the same kind of uh, corresponding uh, binomial coefficient. Two small remarks. These inequalities are actually equalities if and only if you have really something linear. Okay? And uh, moreover, you, um, you can improve this relation a bit because as I said before, it's still on the board here, you can say that the root is either, let's say, from S or from T, and this can, you can improve this part a bit. Uh, let me just give one more uh, result. If you look at the number of shuffles between S and some linear tree of height N, Okay, so you fix n and the s will move. This is actually a polynomial with rational coefficient and we can know the degree. It's not complicated to, uh, to find this degree. It's just the number of vertices in s and the leading coefficient is one over the factorial of the tree. The factorial of the tree, you define this recursively as the uh, product, sorry, 
it would be 1 over the product for v in, uh, let's say, v of s of the uh, factorial of the tree in s above this particular vertex v. So it's a usual uh, notion of, uh, sorry, no. No, 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 that's not what I want to say. Number of vertices of uh, SV, so you multiply the number of vertices of the different subtrees possible over all the uh, elements. Okay, so these are the two kinds of results that we have, and we would have liked to have, let's say, a description with a generating series, but it's the, let's say the easy way to, to do it, something similar to what happens in simplicial sets. So the same kind of generating series doesn't work. Maybe we need some kind of generating series with trees or something like this. We have no further result. Okay, thank you. Very much.